Hey y'all, welcome, welcome back, back to, to my channel. channel. I, I said, said hey. 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 Welcome back to my channel. Hey y'all, hey, I'm Jasmine W. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Okay, um, my shoulders is looking a little dull, honey. I need a ashy some body lotion. Anyway, it's too late. Um <laughs> Thank y'all for coming back to my channel. Y'all know I like to jump right into it, but first I must let you know that I have a podcast called Jasmine Gives Bad Advice. Uh, the last pos podcast episode drops today. Um, I would love to have a, a new episode out on YouTube next Thursday, so just let's just make that a goal. <laughs> Expect it. Um, but anyway, I just want to let you guys know if you are here and you haven't subscribed to my channel, you a hater. Yeah. Period. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel because you come back every week anyway. Thank you guys for 20K. Um, I have 20,000 followers on here, and that's crazy because it, it, it really takes a really long time. So I'm really happy that I reached to 20K. Here's to 40K. Um, as a gift to me, please support my cousin, um, my cousin for Congress, hashtag cousin for Congress, my cousin Joshua Harris Till. He is literally like my second cousin. Um, my, 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 my. Girl, what? My daddy and his mama are uh, cousins <laughs> and uh, first cousins and we are second cousins. So um, please, please support him by donating to his campaign. Um, how often do you get to donate to a black person's campaign running for Congress? Okay. Even if you don't live in Arkansas, it's really important that we support him. Um, I think last week I, you know, we raised like $100 or something like that. So that was really, really great. Only 20 more thousand to go. <laughs> Actually, my, my goal is 10,000 for him. And, you know, I don't really care about reaching the goal. I just care about supporting my cousin because he is so, so politically savvy. And whenever I have questions about politics, I go to him. Um, so anyway, uh, let's jump right into it. This is Married at First Sight reaction video like we do every week. Okay, baby. Um, the first thing I want to say is this episode, I think I always say this, baby, the hair is giving Maxine Shaw attorney at law. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> I always say this every week, but, um, this episode was boring as hell. hell. No, this episode was really boring. Nothing happened. I'm sorry. This is, this review is, I'm going to give you guys what I think I need to give all that I can give. I don't know how much it's going to be, but let's just get into it. Y'all know on my channel, we always start with the most Boring, boring couple, couple. Mm -hmm. okay let's get into it the people i have the least amount of notes on is honestly uh mindy miguel and lindy <laughs> wait what wouldn't bendy wasn't it mindy for being in mindy but now it's miguel and lindy girl who but cares it's not even being in mindy it's being in morgan but we don't care about her real name uh but anyway miguel and lindy okay that's who we're gonna be talking about right now Lindy and Miguel sat down with uh, Dr. Pepper, Pepsi, Coke, Coca-Cola, Sprite, okay? Fanta. And Lindy said, um, I'm, I'm working on how not to be defensive with Miguel. <laughs> yeah, one example of that is um, earlier I was just chopping onions. I was cooking dinner <laughs> and I was chopping onions and he walked by and he said, you should cook those onions a little bit more before you add the spinach. And I immediately, I, I, I almost said, fuck you. <laughs> and I really tried to, girl. Get this girl an Oscar, first of we all. We talking about onions and spinach and dungeons and dragons and scallywagons. Okay, girl, this is, anyway. Give it up, Jazz, let it go. Um, Dr. Pepper said, do you guys love each other yet? Cricket, cricket. You can hear a pin drop. Silence. Everything's going so well. Y'all ought to love each other. Y'all ought to be in love at this point. Are y'all not in love at this point? <laughs> anyway, um, on their little outing this week, um, Miguel and Lindy went dancing. And Lindy talked about her very religious upbringing. She said uh, growing up, she wasn't allowed to dance. Um, she wasn't allowed to eat pork or seafood. She was not allowed to eat shrimp or crab legs or even a crab cake or a crab eggs benedict. <laughs> um, she wasn't allowed to drink, smoke. She wasn't allowed to cuss. She was not allowed to eat popsicles in public. And uh, it was all based on, on sex. Everything was so sexual. Everything's a sin. Do that sound 
sound right to y'all? No, it doesn't. Does it sound right or does it sound like men trying to control us? Because they can't control themselves. Ooh, ooh, that's the tea. That's what it's giving for me. But anyway, um, move on, Jazz. Yeah, uh, Miguel at the end of the episode said that you know when he moved to I forgot where he from was it Puerto Rico? I don't know. But anyway, he's like when he moved there, honey, he was not Latino enough for the Latinos because he couldn't speak Spanish, and he wasn't white enough for the white people because he wasn't white. So he's stuck in this limbo. Oh my gosh, white supremacy has you guys in a chokehold. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> Miguel, you weren't white enough for the white people because you aren't white. Exactly. I guess Dungeons and Dragons accepted you more than your own culture, I guess. But I don't, I don't believe it. But anyway. Girl, let it go. Let's move on, because I'm, I'm, I'm tired of talking about that. Because uh, it's going to come up again later in the episode. Let's move on to the next couple, honey. I don't know where to start. Let's move on to uh, Alexis and Justin. I forgot to bring up the fact that last episode, Alexis had this cat suit on, baby. <laughs> Legs and hips and body. Body. Okay, body on point, Alexis. Baby, I thought it was. I said, is that Alexis, baby, or is that the Pink Panther, honey? Because if it's the Pink Panther, I got a crime that need to be solved, baby. Immediately. Okay, get into it. Um... She looked good. Anyway, uh, I wrote down Justin really just be saying anything. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I, I, oh, when him and Alexis was talking about the argument, he was like, I was thinking, you know, how am I supposed to react? Because you reacting, but you not talking. And I was like, but I'm just trying to figure out what's going on because my wife is silent and you not talking. And I was like, when is she going to talk? And how am I supposed to feel about her talk? Okay, Justin. Okay, baby. <laughs> anyway um justin started crying when they uh spoke to dr pepper before they even sat down justin was crying justin was crying before they even sat down let me fix my light because i cannot deal with the inner me behind me right here Hopefully that's a little bit better. But anyway, uh, <laughs> Justin started crying. Uh, but I understand, you know, he has his, he's had his dog for seven years. His dog is reluctant to be trained. The dog is uh, basically, uh, what's the one? Kojo or Kjo or whatever, honey. But the dog is over there biting people Kojak. and, and wrestling and tussling and uh, nucking if you bucking. So apparently the dog can't come back. The good news is, Justin, if you and Alexis don't work out, you can go get your dog. Boris Kojo. If you and Alexis do work out, it sucks because you know I know what it I know what it's like to have a pet um, for a really long time, and I can't imagine him imagine giving them up. You know what I mean? You have to give your dog up. That's that's really sad. That's sad. Um. Anyway, uh, Alexis' episode was talking about how she has to be strong. How black women don't get to be weak and i completely agree with that i've tweeted many a time this year i am tired of be strong i am tired of being strong i want to be weak like a white woman gets to be weak i'm tired of being a strong black woman i'm tired of being uh uh, uh resilient i'm tired of a strong black woman persona i'm tired of the pressure to not have to break down emotionally and deal with all the shit okay i think that um We've, as a community, black women have had to be strong, but now everyone else in, their, in our community relies on us to take the bullshit and be strong. And, you know, we, it's something that we have to do, but I'm so sick of it. Because who else going to do it? I want to be weak. I want to be gentle. I want to be fragile. Treat me like a fragile flower, baby. I, I, I could die at any moment if you don't take care of me properly. Okay? And that's, the, that's what I live by. Huh, get into it. Um, I'm on the edge of a mental breakdown. Alexis said that, you know, I was taught that you can be played if you are weak. Um, the reality is, is everything that Alexis is saying is on point, but you can be played by being strong too, babe. Ooh, that's a word. So at the end of the day, you can't win for losing. Is that, is that how you say it? Anyway, um, anyway, um, Justin and Alexis went to the park and, uh, Justin said he liked kites he used to pretend to be a kite he used to go look up in the sky i can fly so high however go um 
and he loved kites and he used to think he was one and pretend he's to meditate and fly him and all that shit anyway um and then alexis and justin played basketball and alexis whooped him i'm like how do you get whooped and you seven feet tall right how does that work how do you get whooped at basketball and you eight feet tall how are you a giant and you got you got tore up by her and basketball? That don't make no sense. Anyway. Divorce him, sis. Um, you know, Alexis started talking about hyper independence again. We already talked about that. And um, yeah, that was it. Uh, this episode they wrote letters to themselves, but oh, that's boring to me. I'm sorry. That's all, but that's boring. Who cares about the letters we wrote to ourselves, you know? Except maybe when we get to Mitch and Kristen, I guess. Um let's go ahead and do Mitch and Kristen. So, um, Kristen decided that she is tired of popping that P for Mitch to make him happy. She's tired of popping the P to make him happy. And she wants to chill. She wants to give her, she wants to give herself a rest, okay? By P, I mean plastic. <laughs> um, she said that Mitch from the beginning was vocal about not feeling her. And she felt like she had to overcompensate and prove to him that she was worthy. So she started popping the pee, honey. And she realized, I'm tired of doing it. I don't want to do it no more. This ain't me. And I told y'all that, didn't I? She tried to, she tried yeah, to literally please him physically to overcompensate for the fact that he didn't like her in the beginning. Instead of just being like, you know what? Either you're going to like me or you're not. And matter of fact, if you don't like me, we don't even have to do this. You know? Um, yeah, she said that she lost herself. I said, baby, you lost yourself in four weeks? She lost herself in 48 hours, honestly. Child, baby, if you lost yourself in four weeks, did you really even find, did you really even have yourself in the first place? Exactly. You lost yourself in four weeks with somebody you barely even knew. I don't believe you ever really had yourself, girl. <laughs> to be honest, um, she started demanding stuff from Mitch and Dr. Pepper said, listen, you know that um, Mitch does not do well with demands. And she said, well, he shouldn't have gotten married then. This is what a lot of y'all think. Let me close the book for a second. A lot of y'all think that when you get married, your partner is supposed to do whatever you want them to do. No, that's not how, that's not how life works. Your, your partner is still an individual with their own individual desires their individual, um, you know, uh, wants, think individual things that make them happy. They're not here to just do whatever you want them to do, whether they're male, female, or non-binary. Like, I, there's a lot of women I know to be like, I, I tell my man when to do. No, you don't. He's his own person. You might think you have control over your partner, but at the end of the day, I guarantee you they're doing whatever they want to do. Yep. Like, that's, that, that's one thing, uh, like... I can never be imagine being in a relationship where my partner thinks that they're going to control what I'm doing. No, um, because I have my own. This is my life. I have to. I, at the end of the day, I have to make me happy. So yeah, you're not. You you won't be able to control what, what somebody's doing. And a lot of times, um, you know, men believe that they can control their partner as well. And the reality is, is a lot of y'all be falling for that okie doke, but they can't control you. You know, at the end of the day, you have to do what makes you happy because two happy people is what makes a really, really great relationship or more than two if you're into that sort of thing. Um, okay. But anyway. Um, move on, Jazz. Move on. Dr. Pepper asked uh, Mitch if he in ad admired Kristen. And he said, yeah. <laughs> I just thought that that was a little weird. The face he made was like he was in pain. Yeah, I I do. Really? Do you? Okay. Um, and then Dr. Pepper clocked Mitch and said he gets self-righteous, which he does. He be thinking he know everything. Uh, Mitch had a not a really great upbringing. Didn't have a lot of money. Um, he, he has all these insecurities. And he has the nerve to be self-righteous. Baby, you ought to have low self-esteem. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You shouldn't be feeling like you better than people. Not at this rate. Okay. <laughs> so that, I mean, like, how you, how all that go through and you f still feel like you better? Oh my gosh, honey. Anyway. Anyway, I wrote down, Mitch plays uh, baseball like me. Okay. No. <sighs> That's how I play every sport. <sighs> 
<laughs> That's me. I, I don't like I don't like I don't like playing sports. Um I wrote down um Mitch said that oh oh at the end of the at the end of the episode uh episode Mitch got sensitive. Um he said he was a bad kid with no discipline. Um his mama let him do whatever he want. He ran wild and he he caused a lot of ruckus in the neighborhood. And honestly, I think that uh white people y'all gotta do better. Cause a lot of y'all kids is, is running ruckus in the neighborhood. They in the in the basement building bombs and stuff like that. Y'all really gotta take accountability for this. Because right. Mitch was one of them kids. He out in the neighborhood setting fires. And y'all wondering how the uh how the local church caught on fire. It's him. <laughs> but anyway. Girl, not the local church. It was him. Um, Mitch's letter to himself said, Mitch, don't worry. One day you will be a better person because right now you suck. You are really not a good person. You are really a terrible person, but one day you will get better and you will be a better person. Amen. And I said, damn, a little, a little rough on itself, isn't he? Anyway, let's move on to the next couple. We have two more. So let's go ahead and do light-skinned Keisha and light-skinned Delaney. Dr. Pepper told light-skinned Keisha that she was setting herself up for failure by looking for somebody to be exactly like her. And that is so facts. Baby, you already got you. Why you want somebody just like you? You need more you? <laughs> no, he's not going to act the way that he you want uh he's not gonna act the way that you want him to this is another control thing i want my par partner to express themselves the way i understand no they're gonna express the themselves the way that they understand and you have to learn them dr pepper suggested that they hold hands during uh discussions you know difficult discussions i really believe that shit work i do it does it's letting the other person know that you're not there to hurt them this is a safe space by just really touching your partner, holding hands and connecting with them physically, it really lets them know that, oh, this is a, a safe space. I care about you. Um, so, yeah, you guys, you guys try that at home. <laughs> um, anyway, um, Stasia was reading the letter to herself and I think she said they call her Sweet Pea. She said, Dear Stasia, a.k.a. Sweet Pea. <laughs> and Mitch said... And I said, he do, he do not like her. He do not like this woman. <laughs> he don't like her. Y'all ain't going to convince me he like her. Okay? Y'all just not. Anyway, um, then they started talking about being mixed kids again. Like, here come light-skinned Keisha. Here light-skinned Lindy. He said that um, he was a weird black kid in the neighborhood. He was too European for the kids in the neighborhood. How are you too European when you're black and Asian? Riddle me that. You're not European at all. You're not European. You're American and you're also black and Asian. You're not European. How are you too European when you're not even European? Let me know. This doesn't make sense. This is what I'm talking about. Y'all's proximity to whiteness. Nate tried to align himself with whiteness when he not even white at all. At all. What is, oh my God. Y'all really be tripping me out with this. Um, and then, and then she tried to match his energy, just like she did in the last conversation about how they were, you know, uh, under, under, you know, they weren't popular because they were light skinned. And she said, yeah, I was such a shy kid. I didn't have any friends. I ate by lunch by myself. I played by myself. I, um, did a lot of things by myself in class. I used to do worksheets alone. I used to <laughs> work alone. I was, I didn't have any friends. And then we talked to Nate's daddy and Nate's daddy say he terrorizing the neighborhood. Right. He getting into fights. He tussling. He knocking if you bucking. I thought you was European. But you in the neighborhood, uh, 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 acting like you Rick Ross. Uh. And we knocking and bucking. Okay. That don't make it make sense. Cause that don't make no sense. Ain't ready to fight. We anyway. I thought you was so shy and unpopular, Nate. You were so shy, but you in the uh, uh in the streets throwing hands. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. I wish a hater would get. Um. Anyway, uh, when Nate's daddy was there talking, and he he got a little teary eyed. And enough is and enough. And then a light skinned Akeisha got teary eyed, and then she said, "Nate, let me use your shirt." And she was bending down to wipe her eyes on Nate's shirt. Why? Why? Why can't you use your own shirt or your hands? Why are you bending down? And why did he allow her to wipe her eyes, her makeup, all over his 
crispy black tea several times during this conversation. First of all, you look weird bending over to wipe your eyes on his shirt. Very weird. Second of all, you're ruining his shirt. Third of all, it, it's almost, it, it gave me the, um, it's like, oh, you don't matter. Let me just use you as a rag. Like he's a peasant. I wouldn't, like, I would never bend over to wipe my eyes on my partner's shirt, nor would I let them bend over to wipe their eyes on my shirt. I'm like, baby, let's get you, let's go in the house and get you a tissue because you're not about to wipe your eyes on my shirt, not with makeup. I thought it was also weird when Nate told his dad, I mean, my dad, you know, he had a, just a, a, a really poor upbringing. I mean, what did you have, like six or seven, seven siblings? Do you not know how many aunts and uncles you have? That's that European in him. <laughs> Six or seven? You don't know how many aunts and uncles you have? Right. That was a red flag for me. You don't even know how many there are? Child, anyway. Um, I wrote down, Nate don't never look happy with Stasia. Ever. He never looks happy. He always looks like he's suppressing himself all the time. I don't think they're going to work out. He's playing really nice right now, but he is not happy with her he, he's we don't even physically see him be happy enough for me to be even convinced that they're gonna work out so anyway let's go to the last couple uh bendy being and mindy honey mm. if we talk about being a nurse one more time i, I i'm gonna need an iv in a minute because i'm about to pass out i'm dehydrated i'm gonna need a, i'm gonna need a little iv drip in a second honey because i can't take it anymore okay i've had it up to here all right <laughs> Anyway, Morgan brought up the fact that Ben uh, was lying again. Uh, he's lying. He was dishonest with me. Um, and yeah, he was so dishonest about the fact that he was going back and talking about our relationship with Justin. Well, aren't you talking about the relationship right now in front of all of them? Right, because what, what is it called? What you doing right now? What's the difference? Ain't none. I know on the after show, um, uh, Nate and a couple of the guys that, uh, you know, on the after show were saying that, um, well, just, you know, Ben was actually like telling white lies. He was like stretching the truth a little bit. I think Ben just it was in a silly, goofy mood. Girl. <laughs> I don't know why Ben was lying about the things that was happening in their relationship. Maybe he went to them and he, was, he went to Justin and he wasn't exactly telling the truth. Or maybe Justin was lying about what was said. I don't know because I don't trust, I don't trust Justin either. Because he seemed like he would make up a story just for shits and giggles to me. But anyway, um, Ben said he can't get a word in because she's so strong. Um, he doesn't have anybody to talk to. And all the guys assured him that talking to people is normal, which it is. You guys, listen, you don't have to tell all the nitty gritty details of your relationship because, you know, you don't want to speak too negatively about your partner to other people, but just simply venting and saying, am I crazy about this? Or how, how do you think I should handle when my, when my partner, um, doesn't really listen to me and stuff like that. High level things. It's okay to talk about with people. I don't know what he was sharing about, you know, uh, Morgan. I don't know if he was describing her booty cheeks to Justin, but anything other than that, I think it's pretty much fair game on, on the show. They're there to talk to each other about the couples. And I'm sure like somebody mentioned in the comments, I'm sorry, I don't remember who all of it was on camera because they get together and talk all the time and they always record it. They just don't, a lot of that time doesn't get aired, you know? Um, Morgan moved out. She said that Ben hadn't reached out to her since she moved out. It's been radio silent. Baby, who wants to reach out to you? You said that every day when you rolled over, when you woke up, when you texted, tweeted, you was gonna be talking about how he ain't worth a damn. Who wants to talk to you, Morgan? I wouldn't have reached out to you either. Anyway, um, Ben said he lost seven pounds over this. <laughs> I was like, you lost seven pounds over Morgan telling child being sensitive too. Poor thing. Morgan said that this all has to do with Ben's past traumas, current traumas, demons. Y'all, I'm a Pisces, okay? I'm pretty good at reading people. Ben is not a bad person. Right. Ben is not a monster. I don't even think Ben has demons. Oh, I think that was Ben saying this about himself. He said he has demons. Ben is really beating himself up over this. It was just an honest mistake. Honestly, that's what I think it was. He has demons. 
even if it wasn't a mistake, it's like not this big of a deal. Oh my goodness, the the the, the lack of self esteem with an end and self pity is killing me. Anyway, um, I wrote down is Morgan not talking about the relationship now? And right. Morgan and all the girls went over to meet with all the guys. And apparently Nate called Morgan out on, you know, the way she's treating Ben. I honestly didn't see that part because I was probably up making me an iced coffee or something like that. Because I'm wired up right now. But, um, yeah, at the end of the day, Morgan really needs therapy. I'm glad that Ben went ahead and signed up for therapy. If Morgan thinks that she is not above going to therapy herself, she is dead wrong. She needs help. Okay? She needs to work on her self-esteem. And she really does not need to be in a relationship until she figures out this trauma. And in fact, once she figures out the trauma, she needs to go back to her ex to see if he will accept her since they had such a good relationship. Um, at the end of the day, Ben, Morgan went over to Ben's place now. It's Ben's place now. Went over to Ben's place and Ben read the, his, you know, letter to his child, his self to her. And she's listened to him read his letter, but then said she wasn't going to read hers because she don't want to open up to him in any kind of way then why the hell did you sit here and let him read his? He sat here and opened up to you and read his letter to you and then you brushed him off, said you weren't going to read your letter because you're afraid of getting hurt and you packed your purse and you left. Honestly, that was just uncalled for. Why'd you even go over there? Right. I know the producers probably told you to, but I would have went over there and said, baby, you ain't even got to read your letter to me because I don't plan on reading mine to you. I don't even think we should share intimate details about each other anymore because it, this is not a safe space. But no, you allowed him to open up to you, pour his heart out to you, but then you didn't read your letter. So you got everything that, you know, all the trauma and stuff from his childhood and then you packed your PlayStation. Girl, bye. Girl, bye. Mm-hmm, exactly. Anyway, if y'all still here and y'all ain't subscribed, what I'm going to do? Because y'all hate her and y'all don't support black me black women. Okay, um, black me neither. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna see y'all later. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'll see you on Friday for Ready to Love. Bye. Bye.